Betsy, pass the cucumber sandwiches, old bean. We have cucumber sandwiches. No, we do, we do not have cucumber sandwiches. I want a cucumber. We have no cucumber sandwiches anymore. Just have a pile of crap. Tell me, how. I mean, look at it. I think it's up in a market somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where or how it worked. It seems to speak English. It doesn't speak basic, common lisp, anything else. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing would be so much simpler if someone hadn't thrown Dr. Cumming out of an airlock, and I am thinking about Johnny. Things like getting out of the hat are so small. <laughs> It's not some kind of war, it's in fact a uh, life on the... Life on the... What's the ship we live on again? Aurora. Aurora! <laughs> Sorry, I forget sometimes, uh... How could you forget my girlfriend's name? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> but anyway... But, hating to end on petty merchandising, or indeed serious merchandising, we're quite adept at both. Thank you! Thank you everybody! We have been the mechanisms, and you have been our hostages! But then, we discovered something interesting. The defence grid surrounding New Constantinople mainly consisted of form-class battlecruisers, virtually impenetrable, but there was a human component. A single, unconscious mind at the centre of it. Not one we were familiar with, not, not Rare Rose, not Snow, none of them. Somebody new. And this bothered Nastia. Don't think we have a problem. But I don't... Get it, Nastia. We've been watching billions die for three decades and having a great time. Now you're getting all white-eyed over one poor innocent bit. I don't buy it. Yeah, actually, it's not me, it's the ship. Uh, she cannot bear to see another biomechanical organism in pain. Fuck the ship. <laughs> I don't. <Ew. laughs> anyway, Johnny, it is far too late. I have asked the pilot for setting the coordinates. We're already on our way. Trombot, insubordinate little... Thank you. Fine, okay. Well, I guess it has been a while since we've had any really good violence. Let's go. Sister, how do we wake her up? Well, you could try kissing her. I'm not gonna kiss a sleeping stranger, Nastia. That's really fucking creepy. But I don't use to. 
shoot the machines in the lake. I like that one. Ha! <laughs> Looks like it worked. Drumbot Brian, are we um, are we all set up with sound? Please, and these mortals are just going to perspire more if we wait. <laughs> In which case, Drumbot Brian, I believe you're our pilot. What? What? Sorry, we need to set levels. Sorry. Oh joy. Violin. Why are we taking orders from this mortal, Johnny? Do you know how to work the banjo? <laughs> I hate everything you stand for. <laughs> I'm still up here. Oh. Um, Just do what he says, Tim. I'm doing what he says, Johnny. Baron Marius von Raum, our ship's doctor. Neither a Baron nor a doctor. And Raphael Aracognizzi, our science officer. As cruel and brutal as she is, who is, as usual, present. And, well, why stop at just nine, when there are so many fascinating tales to tell? <laughs> Gunpowder Tim, what a fascinatingly good idea. Let's tell your story. And on and on this went. Every night was a fucking sing-song. <laughs> Unlike... I like these days. <laughs> yes. Later it was giving us our orders as a colonel. I even hear you made general at one point for the other side. Well, what can I say? Your uniforms were all green and rumpled and their helmets had spikes on them. <laughs> I should at this point make sure that uh, no connection is drawn to our Baron Marius, who is uh, lots of militaries have spikes on their helmets. <laughs> Don't make a thing out of this. <laughs> anyway, the point was, it seemed happy enough after its fashion. Do you want to retune that? Yeah, I'd like to retune that. <laughs> Way to break I'd the narrative. Like you and your moisture. <laughs> Your sick moisture. <laughs> See my guns. So I introduced you to a concept, Tim, by the name of narrative flow. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's even worse. <laughs> Stop it, the story's not finished yet. So don't applaud mid-story. Especially you. <laughs> and that, boys and girls, is why there's no longer a moon. It's why in your monodirectional time stream there won't be a moon in like 300 years. Do they really only go one way through time? Pretty much. <laughs> Poor fuckers. <laughs> Until a charismatic stranger came along, not, I hasten to add, my good self. No, you're not that charismatic. <laughs> you are strange, though. <laughs> Lost in the cosmos, lonely. Well, 
Well, that undercut the drama nicely. <laughs> Making it almost as durable as steel, but much more wearable and versatile. I've never had any problems myself. Now, of course, having their faces covered means that they are at risk of being killed by members of their own side. I know that feeling. So it would be laid down in the prospective spot. And this fine magnetic needle... I like magnets. Uh, anyway, yes. Now, this object is of particular interest to me. Because when I'm not being forced at gunpoint to give guided tours, I myself play the mandolin. And I really am inspired by the way in which music can bring hope even in the most dire circumstances. In fact, I raised morale of the uh, troops during the um, campaign against the Moon Kaiser in... Uh... Oh, no, wait, it, it's, uh, it's 2013, isn't it? Oh, gosh. Gosh, you're in for a treat in the <laughs> 2,000 years in the future ago. Goodness me. Hello, I am Gunpowder Tim, and I did not agree to this as well as the fact that it fired traditional projectiles rather than a superheated plasma, but to each their own. And number three, conical bullets, which were more effective than the usual round bullet, though less effective than ball plasma, allowing for new strategies such as sniping and firing at will. The name carved into its chest was read by the townsfolk as Merlin. Though time and rust had long since worn away what it had originally read, which is Brian. And myself, Johnny Deville, your humble captain. <laughs> we don't even have to do it these days, Johnny. <laughs> See, the mechanisms have been on this planet, in this city, for some time now. Having our own brand of fun, I was in one of the lower sub-levels, depopulating it. Marius, I believe, was psychoanalyzing Dionysus. He's just this guy, you know. <laughs> Drummer Brian! Our pilot actually playing a fucking drum! But if anyone has the technological knowledge to know what happened in the Bifrost, it's them. I hate them. Ah, good morning, Inspector Lift. Bonaram. And what can we do for you this fine prison day? Is it about the Bifrost? Yes, how did you know? Yes, it arrived three days ago. Ah, well, we should be going now. Good luck with that. No, I... I'm only here because I need to understand what happened. What happened in the Bifrost? Ah, oh, well then, we shall tell you. Oh, no, you don't need to... No. Shut up! Shut it! No singing. I am sick of your singing. Where did you even get that violin? What? Just... Tell me what happened. Well, if you're going to be like that, why don't you just read the black box? Now, obviously that was, I mean, was sort of a downer ending like usual, but also, also like, ah! <laughs> you know? Anyway, um, Space Pirate. <laughs>